Yeah, Friday! Welcome to the Ranting Ring Watcher Podcast. The future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. the podcast app you're listening on allows you to rate the show please leave a four star or five star rating any rating is greatly appreciated this is episode 76 let's not hold any back let's get into this journey updates well not another great week, so it's two gains in a row. We are up 0.8, eight tenths of a pound. And for the month of January, we are down 2.2 pounds. Total, since January 12th, 2019, we are down 132.8. Pounds remaining to get to milestone 150 is 17.2 pounds. Pounds remaining to get to milestone 175 is 42.2 pounds. And the pounds remaining to get to milestone 200, 67.2 pounds. Not a great week. If you've been listening to my episodes for any amount of time, you'll know my plan for gains. You'll know that I don't make any moves or any changes unless there are three consecutive gains. Right now we're at number two. We're going to keep it steady for another week. And if we have a third gain, we're going to take a look at the situation and make some moves. But a a majority of people They make a move every time they have a gain. How do you really know what caused the gain if you don't write it out? Sometimes it's just an anomaly. And sometimes the scale went up for one week on one time you stepped on the scale. And you really went crazy for no reason because the next week it came right off again. So sometimes it's best to wait out because it's more valuable to be consistent in what you're doing than it is to make changes every time you think something is wrong. If you have the confidence in the work you put in, there's not going to be this need to make changes every time something doesn't go your way. So, something happened to me, I want to say, right before, right after Christmas, right after Christmas, but before New Year's, something like that. We had the Homeowners Association elections. I was the vice president on the board. Well, something went down at the election. Details don't really matter. I took a stand for what was right. And if anybody listening to the sound of my voice ever had to take a stand for what was right, you know that it is not a popular position to be in. When you are in the right and you're standing against what is easy, people don't like that you're standing it up, standing up for it. It's just not a popular position to take. But I stood up for what I believed in. I met a level of anxiety dealing with this situation that I never, I don't know if I never experienced it or, hmm, 
Now, I, I, I definitely never had anything like this happen in my life. But the anxiety, anxiety I felt from the situation and from this whole position that I stood up for caused me to be in the position of on a Saturday morning, I go for my walk eh, around 6.30 in the morning, okay? So I was probably, I don't know, 30 minutes into my walk. So say right around 7 a.m. It's daylight out, and I'm thinking about the situation. I'm dwelling on it. And suddenly, having never felt this before in my life, it almost feels like something's, someone's sitting on my chest. And I can't breathe. And I'm starting to feel lightheaded. Like I can't get enough oxygen in. And like I'm going to faint. And I think to myself, am I having a heart attack? And I start to breathe real heavy and slow. And I, because I don't know what the heck's going on. All I know at at this point, I'm probably about a mile away from the house. Mile and a half, maybe. Not sure. But all I kept saying to myself was just keep walking. Just keep walking. It'll be okay. Just keep walking and breathe. Just keep walking and breathe. It was very... I never experienced anything like it. But... In my mind, it had to be a panic attack. I can't think of anything else it could be. Anyway, we fast forward to Monday, January 31st. Now, we're in a meeting at work. And some things are happening. Again, details aren't really needed. But it was a very stressful situation to say the least. And after the meeting, it was followed by a second meeting. Another, so the first one's what, like 45 minutes, an hour. Second one was about 45 minutes. With first one was with the director, second one was with the suit um, supervisor, and we come out of the meetings, and then my phone starts to ring. With my coworkers calling me because they are stressed out about the situation, and one after another, it's like they took turns, like they all got in a line. And started calling me about the situation. And as I'm talking to them, I'm trying to reason, you know, I always try to stay level-headed in what I'm doing. But I felt the same sensation all of a sudden, kind of, kind of come out of nowhere. It's like something was sitting on my chest. I couldn't breathe. I started to feel lightheaded, like I was going to faint. I was sitting in my chair because I was in my office working. So there's not as if I was going to fall or I was far away from the house. But the conversation I was having with my coworkers over and over again about the topic caused this to happen in my life again. Another panic attack. And that's when I realized I did not have a healthy way to deal with stress in my life. I thought I did, but I did not. We're going to talk about this a little bit more after the break. Don't go anywhere. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to The Ranting Weight Watcher. If you would like to connect on social media, we would love to connect with you. 
On Facebook and Instagram, search for at the Ranting Weight Watcher. On Twitter, search for at the Ranting WW. On the Weight Watchers Connect app, search for at Ranting Weight Watcher. You can also email the show, say hello, or share your story with us. Send your emails to the Ranting Weight Watcher at gmail.com. You can also call the show and leave a voicemail message that could be played on the air. Just call 505-652-7268. Again, that's 505-652-7268. We look forward to hearing from you. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are proud to announce that the Ranting Weight Watcher is now rated number four in Feedspot.com's top 10 Weight Watchers podcasts. Click the link in the show's description if you wish to see the full list. If the podcast app you are listening with allows you to rate the show, please leave a 4-star or 5-star rating, whatever is in your heart to leave. Any rating is greatly appreciated. And now, without further delay, here is the star of the show, Donato Russo. Welcome back. So, in the first segment I talked about some situations that I had happen in my life recently that have led to what I believe to be panic attacks. So I found this article in the Mayo Clinic dot org website. I'm just going to read parts of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but a panic attack is a sudden episode of intense fear that triggers severe physical reactions when there is no real danger or apparent cause. Panic attacks can be very frightening. When panic attacks occur, you you might think you're losing control, having a heart attack, or even dying. Symptoms of a panic attack. Panic attacks typically begin suddenly, without warning. They can strike at any time. When you're driving a car at the mall or sound asleep, or in the middle of a business meeting. You may have occasional panic attacks, or they may occur frequently. Panic attacks typically include some of the signs some of these signs a sense of impending doom or danger fear of loss of control or death rapid pounding heart rate sweating trembling shortness of breath tightness on your throat chills hot flashes nausea abdominal cramping chest pain headache dizziness lightheadedness or faintness, numbness, or a tingling sensation, or the feeling of unreality or detachment. <laughs> I, uh, As I read these things, I just realized how many of them I experienced. Not in the first one. I mean, I'm not in the second one, in the first one. I definitely, looking at this list, I definitely had a panic attack in both situations that occurred recently. This is definitely uncharted territory. I have never been in this position in my life. Now, why now? Why now? I'm trying to think, like, what could be the reason I'm going through this now in my life? You know, I don't know, 10 years ago, right? Before I was ever in the Weight Watchers mindset, I would deal with stress by eating. I was definitely an emotional eater, for sure. And since starting Weight Watchers, and here I am three years in, and having... Within a month, less than a month, I would say, or just about a month, it happens twice in 30 days. And the one thing different now than 10 years ago is that there's no outlet. There is no food to turn to. I didn't go for a walk on Monday, the day of the panic attack, the second one. Because I was 
I became nervous that if I went for the walk, I would think about the situation and find myself in the exact same position I was however many weeks ago with the other situation. A mile away from the house and suddenly having this episode. It is truly amazing what it's so hard to, and part of me is like thinking about this. Okay, when I used to emotionally eat, let's take it back, let's take a trip back for a second here. When I used to emotionally eat, how could emotional eating have stopped this feeling? Is it possible that nothing in my life was ever this anxiety ridden, you know? And I'm just, am I cracking up? Am I going crazy here? And I can't handle stupid shit in my life? I have to really evaluate myself here. Because if I really am being honest with myself right now, since I started Weight Watchers and since I came to the conclusion that food would not fix my problems, I never replaced it with a healthy way of dealing with my problems. What I did instead was just bury the problems. And if I had an issue and someone asked me what's wrong, ah, who, who wants to hear about complaints anyway? No one wants to hear what you're going through. So I didn't say anything. Just say, all right, I'm okay. And I, I mean, I don't know if I was lying to myself or what, but I did. De- I definitely felt okay. And then I come to this situation with the ele- election, dwelling on it, thinking about it constantly, losing sleep over it, resigning from the board to stand on my own beliefs in a situation that would make me very unpopular, causing this, causing this panic attack causing me to finally not to realize. So two in one month's time, and it's causing me to realize I do not have a healthy way to deal with stress. So how can I, I don't even know. I, I, how can I deal with stress in a healthy way? We're going to take another break. Don't go anywhere. Hello, I'm Donato Russo, and I am the Ranting Weight Watcher. I wrote an affirmation. It's called the Ranter's Creed. I dedicate that affirmation to all of you who are watching. Nothing can stand in your way because you are an unstoppable force. Your challenges crumble in your presence because you are so strong. Your insecurities no longer have power over your life because you are so confident. Your mistakes are your choices and you are okay with this because you are so intelligent. The mirror and the scale no longer haunt you because you are so beautiful. You can face any circumstance with unwavering support because you are so loved. The demons of your past can no longer torment you because you love yourself. All things are possible as long as you believe because God is on your side. You will achieve all of your goals, not if, but when, because you have no boundaries. 
You are the champion of your story because you do whatever it takes to win. No one can take what you've done away from you because you are the author and the hero of your story. Arise, champion. The victory is yours. Because you are enough. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is times like these that I turn back to what I was taught spiritually growing up. And that was Psalm 23 in the King James Bible. I used to believe that exercising helped me relieve stress, and I'm sure it does. Except the very first panic attack happened during exercise. And now there's a fear that it will happen again during exercise. I didn't walk on Monday because I feared... I would have another panic attack on Monday since I had already had one that afternoon. And the first time I had the panic attack after the election, I didn't walk the day after that. That was a Saturday. And Sunday I chose not to walk. Because I was afraid the same thing would happen. Avoiding this situation will do me no good. There has to be another way for me to deal with this. I don't know what is that way. Now, you guys might say, oh, maybe go and talk to a doctor and, you know, whatever. I did the therapy route when it came to gastric bypass. And I did it again when it came to the possible revision of the gastric bypass. Now, the first time, I just went for the evaluation. So the initial surgery. In the approach of a revision surgery, I kept going because the doctor said he thought I would benefit from going to therapy. 
this doctor and I disagreed on many things. Maybe I am stubborn. Maybe I'm hard-headed. Okay, you know what? Forget maybe. I am stubborn. I am hard-headed. But it seemed like all he wanted to do was find ways to blame my father for my situation. My father died in 1995. At the time, we're talking four, four years ago now, right around four years ago, when I was pursuing, because I'm on Weight Watchers three years, so it was the, it was the approach. So I started January 12, 2019 on Weight Watchers. So it was the months leading up to the holiday season that they, we were exploring the possibility of a revision surgery. So say September 19, uh, 2018, September 2018, something like that. Maybe it wasn't even August or July. Now that I'm thinking about it. But he just kept finding ways to blame my father for everything wrong in my life. And I kept pointing out my father died in 1995. At some point, the burden I'm holding on to is my choice to hold on to it. And he, we, but, we butted heads on this subject many times to the point where I had to respectfully just say, hey, listen, we're not getting anywhere here. You believe your way. I believe my way. I'm not going to bend. Simple as that. And I left and never went back. Was it a smart thing to do? I don't know. I didn't feel like I was benefiting from anything. I am the kind of person that blames myself first for everything in my life. If there's a problem, I look at it and say, how is this my fault? What did I do to contribute to the issue? Is there anything I can do to fix it? Nothing is a surprise. In reality, someone who's working somewhere for years and stealing money for years gets caught. It's basically an understanding that there's no way this was your first time. If you got caught stealing money, you're fired because this is just the first time you got caught. It's, I don't know how that compares to what I've been talking about here, but I always look for ways to blame myself for everything. How did I contribute? What did I do to make the situation worse? And when things got really bad, I would turn to food. Obviously, that would be a good enough distraction from the issue. It also is what got me to 460 pounds in the first place. One of the reasons, at least. I used to think that this podcast was therapy for me. But sometimes even this, working on this podcast is stressful. Don't get me wrong. I'll never stop doing it. I love doing it. This entire thing is a labor of love. But I can't call it therapy either because it causes stress at times as well. The real question is, what can I do To center myself. A spiritual life. Is what I always turn to. Because it's what I was taught. Do I feel like a spiritual life will. Benefit anyone? Of course I do. It is. Part of what makes me who I am. But I think. I need to add more to this. To manage continually. I cannot keep burying my emotions in an effort to make it so I don't emotionally eat. Because that's really what I'm doing right now. 
I'm burying emotions in an effort that I won't turn to food again. And that's not healthy either. If I feel like I need additional things, I will have to look for different ways to fix this. I don't... (laughs) This is weird because usually I end a podcast by talking about coming to some grand conclusion. And here I am. I, I just basically showed you my wound and tell you I don't know how to fix it. That's what this episode is. Look, see the wound in my side. I don't know how to fix it. Maybe there's something to get from this. I'm sure I'm not alone. So tell me, how do you feel about your fearless leader now? Just when you think you have all of these things figured out, you something happens that makes you realize you had nothing figured out. I have no plans on how to fix this. I don't even know what to do. But the one thing I can say about all of this is not once not for one second not for one moment did I ever think that I needed food to cope with this situation and if there is one thing to pull from this entire story it's that That after all of this time and battling emotional eating, I can say that for one huge situation that I ran into out of nowhere, emotional eating was the last thing on my mind to fix this situation. Have I fixed the situation? No, not even close. But here's the thing. I already won just for the fact that I didn't even think about food for half a second. For half a second, I didn't think about food. And you know what? I'll take that as the win. I'll take that and I'll run with it. And you know, I I have no doubt in my mind I will figure out how to deal with the stress in my life. And none of it will have to do with food because I know now going here from this point on, never need food again to deal with anything that goes wrong in my life. I have finally gotten over the idea that food will fix my problems. I have said it to you before, food only fixes one problem, starvation. And none of us, none of us are dealing with starvation. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.